South Sudan, the youngest nation in the world, stretched out from the banks of the White Nile toward the eastern border with Ethiopia and to the Central African Republic in the west. In the south, the White Nile flows out of the Uganda and crosses the country in a long curve to Sudan in the north. A vast land with a street spanning from the ancient eras of the Egyptian dynasties and the kingdom of Kush to the turbulent present time. After having been part of the Arab-oriented Sudan, the country won its independence in 2011 and has since then looked for connection with the neighbors in the south, resulting in membership of the East African community in 2016. Over relying on the revenues from the oil export, the country is now bearing the brunt of the drop in oil prices, as well as the devastating effect of the armed struggles with Sudan and more recently internal conflict that have all but destroyed the oil winning installation and have sent the population in several areas pleading for their lives. The people of South Sudan have gone through more than 50 years of struggle to gain their freedom. They are extremely resilient and many are determined to build up their country to a better future. Better prosperity can be a strong promoter of peace and stability. The land is fertile and there is plenty of rain, especially in the southern areas and has enormous potential for agricultural production. There are also deposits of gold and other minerals. But this usually need foreign investment to be exploited on less scale. The government, looking to complement the oil revenues with the more sustainable and less risky source of incomes, has therefore started searching for ways to promote some high-value agricultural product of South Sudan for export. Stephen Doctor is a director general of foreign trade at, Min at the Ministry of Trade and Industry. Our products, our honey in South Sudan, went to Japan. Anything we eat, anything we consume. Anything you eat, it must have a certain quality and a certain requirement to go to the market. If it does not meet this quality and this requirement, it will not go to the market. This program aims at assisting producers of export products to comply with international safety requirements. But it is important to mention that quality is not enough only, it must be proven. Therefore, this hazard training program, which we have done over the last 20 days, was aimed at training auditors at the Bureau of South Sudan, uh, South Sudan National Bureau of Standards, and other ministries, we call technical ministries. So we realized that um, one of the barriers in international trade is the, is the issue of uh, food safety and issue of uh, agricultural health standards. And we realized that for South Sudan really to, to participate fully in, uh, in terms of regional uh, trading platforms and international trading uh, platform, the, other, the issues are very critical. It is, um, it is, the, it is um, under that um, uh, guidance that we, we supported the, the HACCP and also SPS. We are now coming, we are creating a, a national committee on, uh, on uh, sanitary and phytosanitary measures in South Sudan. SPS stands for Sanitary and Phytosanitary Measures, which has to do also with food safety. Yeah, it also has to do with animal health and plant health, but one component is also, an important component is also food safety. So this committee is very important for the country because it is the regulator of all these food safety issues. Yeah, so uh, the establishment of that committee, which has now been, you know, the, the result of those workshops were, was, was basically a cabinet memo to be presented so that the cabinet can actually agree to establish that committee. Once that committee is there, now regulations can be made to make sure that the country is safe, yeah, the people are safe in terms of food, but also that the country can produce safe food for export. Honey and gum arabic are already being produced and exported in limited quantities. Mr. Matata Kamis from Honey Care. So basically that is how we do uh, the honey process. It's from the, we started by training with the farmers 
after training the farmers, the farmers go and harvest the honey in, in raw form. They compound, they get the comb, put it in the buckets, fill and close it, take the honey to the collection centers. We send our truck, the truck collects from the collection centers, deliver it to our store in Juba or our plant in Juba. We do uh, separation, you know, the liquid from the wax, the wax uh, is reprocessed to get uh, wax uh, uh, blocks out of it. We sell the wax blocks and then the liquid, we take it for filtration from filtration. Uh, we package it and sell it local here and any surplus that the local market is unable to absorb we then export that to the regional market we have exported several uh, tons to kenya to our sister company and we made our first uh, which i call a major export to uh, to japan in uh, in year 2016 which was uh, a major breakthrough for south sudan a country that's depending on uh, uh, oil as being the only source of revenue um, that was a major breakthrough for us, and uh, we are looking forward to see if we can also, uh, you know, tap other markets in the region or far beyond uh, our region. Gamarabic is also an export product with enormous potential. Mr. Koyuidul of Ramshell Multipurpose explains. As you can see here, we have uh, a first-class uh, gum Arabic. This is what we call it, uh, Acacia Senegal. There is a different type of trees. And we have Acacia Senegal and we have Acacia Seyal. But the quality of Acacia Senegal is the highest. So here in this store, we, we, we keep our product uh, Gamma Rabbit. That is where we keep it here for, for exportation. So we need to export this uh, product uh, to any uh, other countries, like uh, UAE, Europe, or any, any customer who is going to come uh, to us here so that we can sell this. A third product with export potential is shea butter, which has also been selected for promotion by the government. The next question is, what does it take to successfully export these products? The answer is safety and quality. Not only must the product meet quality and safety standard, but also proof must be given that the requirements of the customers are met and technical regulation in the country of the destination are complied with. This involves inspection, conformity assessment, and certification to international standard. The most important requirements are those of hygiene in the production and processing of the products. The products must be kept free from pests such as insects or fungus, and should also be kept under the correct condition to avoid dirt or spoiling. A worldwide standard approach to ensure the safety of the product is hazard analysis and critical control point system, or HACCP in short. This is where the training program is sponsored by Trademark East Africa comes in. It is very important that we are supporting that component in the sense that um, it will enhance export capacity and competence for South Sudan, uh, especially food products. In this case, uh, our, the export is, um, is a shea butter, uh, gum arabic, honey, and other food products that uh, South Sudan has both comparative and competitive advantage. Trademark East Africa is a multi-donor funded organization that aims at improving welfare in the member states of the East African community. By enhanced trade, this is achieved by eliminating unnecessary barriers to trade and reducing of the cost of doing business. Trademark East Africa has been assisting South Sudan since 2012 in several projects. With major efforts at the National Customs Service, and National Bureau of Standards. For example, the construction of the test laboratories for the conformity assessment of products. Bureau of Standards is a, is a scientific regulatory and monitoring body this is that actually uh, safeguard the consumers, uh, safeguard the environment, as well as uh, helping the economy of South Sudan. In order to assist exporters of the three selected products to comply with the technical requirement of the destination countries, a training program was conducted on the HACCP system. This was targeted at two functions. Firstly, training of the quality inspectors from the South Sudan National Bureau of Standard, the Ministry of Livestock and Fisheries, and the Ministry of Trade and Industry, being trained as HACCP auditors. Secondly, training of the private sector operators of the selected product in the application of HACCP in their production facilities. The 20-day training program includes site visit to the production facilities of the participant, where actual HACCP audits were conducted as practice. 
at Honeycare, there are already procedures and measures in place which could be readily audited with the HACCP approach. Even if the company is already applying good agents principle, the audit is useful. The company is supposed to document the control of hazards and the audit provides proof that they are doing the right things. Here in the packaging room we have the honey spinner, this machine here. It's used for separating the combs from the liquid. And this down hole is where the liquid normally flows into the bucket. So after using the honey spinner, we get the liquid honey. So we want to ensure that there are no hazards. We normally use this filter for filtering it again before we put it into the honey tank to settle. So this honey tank, normally we get the honey from the filter to the tank after refiltering it using this filter again. And then from here, we normally leave it to settle for 24 hours before we pack it into the jars. After packing it into the jars, now we put our label, which reads pure natural honey. After putting the label, we normally do cartoning. From this stage here, it goes to cartoning. And here we have our sealing machine, and here we have our weighing machine. Before we sell any product, we need to confirm that the gram, which is indicated here, is weighed. The HACCP principle teaches that you should control any points where hazards could enter in the product. This can be at any stage from the sowing, growing and harvesting of the crops to the processing, packaging and storage and transport. This is called the farm to table principle. Here we have the store. The store is where our finished products are kept and this room here is being monitored because a store normally has to be according to the product that you store. Like honey, it has to be stored according to the room temperature. If it's too cold, you find that the honey will crystallize. So to avoid that, we need to monitor this room. The temperature has to be maximally monitored, not to allow the product to crystallize. And the material that we use for packaging, it's guaranteed that it's a safe material. When this product is getting out of this room, this store to the market, the food vendors in the market have to properly store and properly handle this product. It's also the responsibility of the consumer now. When you buy this product, you also look at the historic condition of this product. So when you do not store them properly, you will end up consuming product which is not safe. For gum arabic, the harvesting, cleaning, sorting, packing and storage are the most important phases. After the second collection, there is also a third collection, which is uh, between 10 to 15 days again. And then you go to collect them and then they put them in the centre, whereby they try to clean them. Because, you know, when you get these things, sometimes you have uh, residues of the bark of the tree. So they clean them and keep them in one, one place, and then they put them on, on jute sacks. So that uh, from there, then they take them to, to the buyers, where they can weigh it, and then after but uh, for us as Ramshell, we have our collectors, they bring this thing to us and then we, we, we pay them on that and then we take them to our stores. So for sorting it out, to clean it, and after the cleaning, and then we put them uh, in, the, in the other jute bag. Uh, the, the, the transportation part of it is very expensive because we transport them by air. From, from rain, they'll take them by uh, trucks, and then trucks, then we take them they are from Folich to, to Juba, then we fly them to Juba here. So then we bring them to Juba and then we pack them in these bags where we put the logo of uh, Ramshel and then uh, we put uh, all the levels, the, the, the area where we produce. Of course, if this is a product of South Sudan, we have to put it according. And then we have to put the weight and then we stack them here. After keeping them here, of course, before exporting them out, we need to get uh, the certification for that. We have to get the phytosanitary certificate, and then we have to get the, the origin certificate. The other two participating organizations, South Sudan Women Entrepreneurs Association and M Global, 
are still devolving their production line for export of honey and shea butter. They also benefit from the training because they can now apply the HACCP skills to the design of their production facilities and procedures. We've been attending a training on hazard, which is hazard analysis critical control point. Um, we produce honey as a product made in South Sudan. So looking into the training we've achieved a lot as a company, since it focuses on food safety, it has enabled us to have a safe product that we're going to produce. We're already implementing the plan to ensure that whatever we are producing is safe and ready for consumption to people in the market. Not only that, we do other things, we do seed production too. So we look at all that to enable that we have a safe product that is out sold to the market. It's, um, it's a training we've been doing with members from the National Bureau of Standards and some other people from the private sector. And it has opened out our eyes that from any process that we take in the process of uh, producing our products, of which we are focusing on honey, that at any point we can have hazards that can come into the product that can make the food and safe for consumption. So looking into the training, it gives us an upper hand. It being one of the first in South Sudan, it gives us an upper hand on how we can produce our safe products. This training, we are very much appreciative to have, to, to have the knowledge so that we can put it into practice. We encourage all the, the private sectors who are in this, uh, in the companies who are making the food or water, especially water in South Sudan and especially in Juba. We need uh, the view of standard to get these people have their hazard plan. The training program consisted of the theory lessons followed by the side visit to the production facilities. Practical studies were done by the participants in identifying hazards and critical control points. Measures to control those hazards were determined and the findings were presented on the last training day. There I would put a, 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 a control point there, but I don't have. So up to the last one. Uh, down there I'm saying that CCP stands for critical control point. That's where you're going to mutate where you think there's that. Hazard identification, we have the biological hazards. In my plan up in the flow chart, I've discovered that there's a, uh, there's a uh, biological hazard. Ten inspectors from the government institutions were trained as HACCP auditors and six staff members from a total of four production companies were trained in the HACCP principles. The training has been wonderful and uh, in fact we have come to the final conclusion of the training and the training has been beneficial to us because it is first of its kind in South Sudan and uh, we would like to ask the National Bureau of the Standard actually to come up with uh, this kind of program so that others who have not actually uh, attended the training should also next time actually attend the training so that uh, all the lion ministries or lion the government institutions should be aware of uh, such kind of programs so that the micro and uh, medium uh, food producing uh, industry in South Sudan will be able actually to produce safe food for the human consumption. And indeed, the program has been very good because I never knew before that there are some other things that are called actually chemical, physical hazard in, in the food uh, producing industries. And indeed, uh, the program really helped a lot of industries in South Sudan to produce food for the people of South Sudan. And we encourage, actually, because we have been actually trained together with the people from the private sector, the, 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 the people from industry, small and the medium in, uh, industry in South Sudan, which are producing food, uh, will uh, really be uh, checking on those industries whether the, 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 the knowledge that they have acquired from the training is put into practice or not. Because as a government uh, employee, my main task uh, will be actually to come up with actually HACCP uh, 
auditing plan, and after HACCP auditing plan, I would be able actually to audit the companies, whether they really, uh, they, they, are, they, are, they are compliant with, the, 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 with what they have already actually acquired from the training. And indeed, after auditing, I will come up with the report to make sure or to, or to show to them that uh, they are either actually uh, producing safe food or food that are, are contaminated with a lot of hazard. Our private sectors do have that same initiative to request the South Sudan National Board of Standards to rule the trademark East Africa to have them such a similar program extended. I would like to recommend the trademark East Africa for the wonderful program and the sponsor that they have handed for us in order to be able to attain this training. The way forward is now that a HACCP certification program should be developed, which is recognized by the international community. The knowledge must also be spread among producers through further training programs. You are graduating, you must be the trainers of, to come and train more behind you. The country, South Sudan, must be proud of you today. And we extend this to Coral, and we extend this to, to Trademark East Africa, and also to the Bureau of Standard. And the Bureau of Standard, we honor them because they always, in close collaboration with the Trademark East Africa, they bring us to share knowledge, and we see uh, young people like you are being brought to be trained so that they also acquire new skills to do job, to do trade particularly in the private sector. I want to conclude by saying that if we expect, if we are expecting that the product that we are getting from other countries must be served, also we must ensure that safety is not about anything that is coming out. Something that we are also producing must also meet the safety standard. And we always got to be, be mindful that Anything that we are exporting out of this country is also safe and to the expectation of the international safety and technical requirements. This tendency that we cannot do it, this is not. Anybody in South Sudan can have faith that South Sudan is capable and that's why we train the companies and we train the, the staff of the government that they must take up to the challenge what other countries are doing, and they have to do it. And we have all the resources at our disposal as we have done this training. The Bureau of Standards, that when we finish the training, as we are issued the certificate today, it will be your challenge to make sure that you make proper use of the people that we have trained, so that they train other people and in the Bureau, and also ensure that they give guidance to the food manufacturing and other products we are working with the government of South Sudan and um, it's a very uh, receptive government and we are working with the, with the donors um, and uh, we are working with the private sector and civil society. We think that uh, through this partnership we will be able to achieve a win-win situation and this country will come back to the peace, stability for uh, economic growth of this country and ensure people that are able to come back and engage into productive venture. And so ended a successful trademark East Africa HACCP training program. It is now up to the Bureau of Standard and the export producers to continue and build up the export capacity of South Sudan.